Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Taib, today's lecture inshallah, today's class is the last in the book of or the chapter of purification, Kitab al-Tahara of Zad al-Mustaqni, of Imam al-Hajjawi, rahimullah ta'ala. And Bab al hayd the chapter of menstruation, is one of the most difficult chapters or books to deal with, books of fiqh, parts of fiqh. In fact, it's narrated that Imam Ahmed, rahimullah ta'ala, he sat for nine years focusing on this. And of course, when they would focus on a topic, it means a completely different understanding. They would understand something holistically, completely, from every imaginable angle. Every time they come across a hadith, they would check the narration of that hadith the chain of the hadith, who's in the hadith. So it's not just an understanding, it's a very holistic and deep understanding. But even so, Imam Ahmed, the Imam of Ahl Sunnah, taking nine years on a particular topic, shows you how difficult it can be. But with Allah's tawfiq, inshallah, we can get a basic understanding of this. So Babu al-Hayd, Hayd lughatan, comes from Saylan. Saylan means that which flows. So they say, Hadd al-Wadi, that the valley had and it means that it has flowed so hayd has the meaning of flowing and that's exactly what it is it's pertaining to the menstruation blood which flows from a woman in given times had al wadi ida sal and shar'an the technical meaning of hayd is damun tabi'atun wa jabillatun يخرج من الأنثى في أوقات معلومة okay? That which is natural blood and it comes out from a woman in specific times or at specific times دم طبيعة يخرج من الأنثى في أوقات معلومة And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it in the Quran Surah Al-Baqarah يسألونك عن المحيض كل هو أذى فأتزل النساء في المحيض They ask you pertaining to the menstruation Say it is a harm, so stay away from the women. Staying away from the women here means do not have sexual intercourse with them. Stay away from them until they become pure of this. The, the reason I said that is because in many cultures and faiths, when a woman is having menstruation, they stay away from her totally. They have her put outside of the house or something of that nature. So that's, of course, not our situations in this natural deen of Islam. So dam al hayd dam meaning blood and the hayd blood it has characteristics which are peculiar to it okay from these characteristics is that it's damun aswad yu'raf the prophet sallallahu said about this that it's dark blood okay it's color it's dark black dark not truly black but dark and it's thakhin thakhin meaning it's thick in its nature it's not thin like the other blood Okay, so it's aswad and it's thakhin. Thakhin meaning thick. Okay? And it's muntin. Muntin meaning it has a very bad smell to it. It has a bad smell to it. Okay? Whereas other blood doesn't. Wala yatajammad. And it doesn't. Um, what's that word? Congeal. It doesn't clot together. Okay? Whereas other blood does. So these four are four major signs of Dhamm al Okay? What were they? That it's uh, aswad, thakhin, that is thick. Okay? Muntin, that it has a smell to it. Wala yatajammad, and it doesn't congeal. And also, some of the ulama, they mention that pain is associated with it. So when a woman experiences this uh, menstruation cycle, then pain is normally associated with it. طيب. This hayd blood, when it comes to a woman, she's known as ha'id. She's known as ha'id. Ha'id is the one who's experiencing the blood. And now, when she has hayd, okay, with these qualities that have been described, or some of them, then there are nine things which are forbidden upon her. Nine things which are forbidden pertaining to hayd. The first of them, is for her to sit in the masjid, okay? She cannot sit in the masjid, stay in the masjid until her blood has stopped, until she has made wudu. Tayyib? So imagine a story in your mind. While she's sitting in the masjid, 
Okay, while she's not allowed to be sitting in the masjid, she's not allowed also to touch Quran. That's the second. Nor is she allowed to read the Quran. Okay, even without touching. That's the third of them. Nor is she allowed to make salah. Fourth. Nor is she allowed to make tawaf. Fifth. Right? Nor is she allowed to have intercourse, her or her husband. Six. Nor is she allowed to be divorced. Seven. Talaq. Okay? And eight. Nor is she allowed to have al i'tidad bil ashur. Al i'tidad bil ashur, meaning that when she's divorced and she's in her idda period, she cannot count her idda according to months. Rather, any woman that experiences menstruation has to count her idda, her divorce period, according to menstruation cycles. Tayyib. And there's one of them I missed. Did I say fasting? I didn't say fasting, right? And fasting is the night of them. Tayyib, fasting is the night of them. So sitting in the masjid is not allowed until she makes wudu and the blood stops, right? Praying is not allowed. Uh, making tawaf, fasting, reading Quran, touching Quran, sexual intercourse, being divorced is the eighth, and the ninth is i'tidal bil ashur. That her idda is not counted according to months, rather, her divorce idda is accounted according to menstruation cycles, three menstruation cycles. Tayyib? So the Imam Rahimullah Ta'ala he says, Wala hayd qabla tis'i sinin, wala ba'da khamsin. That there's no menstruation for a woman considered in terms of ruling before nine years of age. What they mean here by nine years of age is that she should have started in the tenth year of her age, right? And not after 50 years. So before this age and after that age of 50, blood is not considered as menstruation, even if it's seen. Tayyib. وَلَا مَعَ الْحَمْلٍ And nor is she considered to have hayd when she is pregnant. Okay? So if a woman is pregnant and she sees blood, then this blood is not considered to be hayd. Why? Because in Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ heard about Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu that he divorced his wife while she was in a menstruation cycle, while she was hayd. Okay? So the Prophet ﷺ said, مُرْهُ فَلْيُرَاجِعْهَا ثُمَّ لِيُطَلِّقْهَا طَاهِرًا أَوْ حَامِلًا Command him to return her as his wife. And then, if he wishes, divorce her while she is in a state of purity, meaning outside of the menstruation cycle, or she is pregnant. So pregnancy here is a sign that there is no hayd. That's why the Imam says, wala ma'hamal, that there is no hayd whilst you are pregnant. And the proof is the hadith that we just quoted. And he said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, the Imam, وَأَقَلُّهُ يَوْمًا وَلَيْلًا وَأَكْثَرُهُ خَمْسَةَ عَشَرٍ That the least of hayd which is considered as a ruling is a day and a night, 24 hours. And the most of it that can be is 15 days. So any blood which comes to the woman and it's less than 24 hours is not to be ruled as dam al hayd Okay? It will be ruled as dam al fasad That which is uh, istihada, another type of bleeding, right? A, a bleeding of sickness. You can translate it as. So Dhamm al has to be as a minimum, minimum 24 hours, okay? And as a maximum 15 days. If it's over 15 days, again, it's given the ruling of Dhamm al-Fasad or Dhamm al Okay, this is taken from the story wherein Ali radiallahu anha, anhu, a woman came to him and said that she had completed her idda in one month. Okay, she had completed three menstrual, menstruational cycles in one month. So he said to Shuray al-Qadi, one of the famous judges in his time, he said, iqdi fiha, yani find out about this and come to a decision. So this Shuray al-Qadi, he found out about it, that in fact, she had menstruation for 24 hours, right? Then she was pure for 13 days. Then she had menstruation again for 24 hours. Then again, she was pure for 13 days. So this is 28 days in total. And then on the 29th, she had menstruation again for 24 hours. So within a month, she had three she had three menstruation cycles, okay? So this goes back to show that the least of it can be 24 hours, a day and a night, okay? From the story of uh, Shurayh al-Qadi, that the least of the hayd can be 24 hours, or should be 24 hours. And the most of it, 15, right? Sheikh Ahmed Khalil, in his explanation of this book, Zad al he gives a ta'lil, he gives a reason with regards to 15 being the most. He said, if it goes over 15, 
that meaning it's the most of the month. Why? Because he said, Al Akthar Lahu Hukam al Kul. Al Akthar, the most, Lahu Hukam al Kul. The most takes the ruling of all. So if it goes to 16 days of bleeding, we're saying as though she bled the whole month. Therefore, one of the reasons, one of the ta'lilat is that it can only be 15 days as a maximum, right? Because if it goes over 15, it's as though she has bled the whole month and a woman cannot bleed the whole month. Okay, this is one of the ta'lilat, ta'lilat that they give. There's many others. وَغَالِبُهُ سِتٌ أَوْ And the غَالِبُهُ That which is most common in terms of the menstruation is that it's six or seven days. Most common in menstruation cycle is that it's six or seven days. وَأَقَلُّ طُهْرٍ بَيْنَ حَيْدَتَيْنِ ثَلَاثَةَ عَشْرٍ And the least amount of purity between the two cycles has to be 13 days. Going back to the story of Shurayh al-Qadi with Ali radiallahu anhu. So if a woman has hayd, if a woman has hayd for five days, right? And then she has purity for 10 days, and then she has hayd again for five days. What do you say about the second hayd? Do you say that it's a new cycle? So she has hayd, she has menstruation for five days, right? Then she has purity, no bleeding for a whole 10 days. And then again after 10 days, she has another menstruation cycle of whatever amount of days, five days. What's the ruling on the second one? Accord it's, not it's not hayd because the rule we just said that it has to be 13 days of purity between the two sets of cycles. So what we will consider the second, we'll consider a completion of the first, of the first menstruation cycle. Okay, as mentioned by Sheikh Bajabir in his explanation. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, as a second opinion in the madhab, he said that there's no definition of the least or the most in terms of hayd, okay, nor of the least amount of purity that is required. Whenever hayd is seen with its descriptions, whenever that menstruation blood is seen, then that is what is acted upon, as long as it doesn't go over 15 days, right? <coughs> so the, according to Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, there's no least, uh, there's no set definition of that which is least and that which is most. Yeah. And the Imam Rahimullah he said that regarding the purification period, which we said must be a minimum of 13 days, our Imam and Imam Hajawi he said that there's no maximum for how long that purity can be. Meaning a woman she can have a menstruation cycle and then she may not bleed again for the next two, three years or the next two, three months or whatever. There's no limit for how long her purity will be between the menstruation cycles, okay? That's what he means here. الحائد, الصوم, and the ha'id, the one who is menstruating, she makes, up, she makes up the fasting, if she missed obligatory fasting, okay? And she doesn't have to make up the salah, if she missed any salah. وَلَا يُصِحَّانِ مِنْهَا بَلْ يَحْرُمَانِ and they are not, even if she does them, they are not going to be ruled as being valid and correct. So while she's menstruating, if she does fasting and she does um, praise, prayers, then these are not going to be ruled as correct, okay? They're forbidden upon her, and if she does them, they're not going to be correct. So what does she make up? She makes up the fasts and not the prayers. Because in the hadith in Bukhari Muslim, Mu'adha, she said to Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, ma ba'lul ha'id, she said, why is this situation of the ha'id, the menstruating woman, that she makes up the fasts, but she doesn't make up the prayers? So Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, anti. She asked her, are you from those people from Harura, that they are considered to be a deviant group from the Khawarij? She said, Lestu bi walakin ni asal. She said, I'm not from those people, but I'm asking. Yani Aisha radiallahu anha was saying to her, why are you having an issue with this? Are you from that deviant group? You know, and so she said, "No, I'm not from them. I'm just asking." So Aisha radiallahu anha said, "Kana yusibuna thalik, fa nu'maru bi qadai sawm, wa la nu'maru bi qadai salat." Aisha radiallahu anha she said, "We used to experience that in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, meaning the menstruation, and he would command us to make up the fasting and not command us to make up the sawm. Okay, to, not to uh, command us to make up the salat. So this uh, is the proof for not making up the salat." And also in it is an indication that Aisha radiallahu anha and the companions they would find asking about the rulings of the religion, religion for no real reason. 
something what deviant people would do. You know, today, people like to ask about every single issue, okay, whether it's to do with belief or whether it's to do with fiqh. They really want to, you know, uh, dissect it as much as they possibly can before they act upon it. This wasn't the way of the companions, radiallahu anhu. So, we said that she doesn't make up the salah. Sheikh al mushayqih in his explanation of this book, and he quotes from Al-Insaf also, he said that the salah is not made up. However, there is a situation where the woman, she's praying and then she starts to bleed. Okay? So this salah has to be made up because she made the takbir of the ihram while she was pure. She made the opening takbir of the prayer while she was pure and then she started to bleed. So that prayer has to be made up and also any prayer that could have been joined with it. So if she prayed, for example, dhuhr, right? And then her bleeding started after making takbir of the ihram. So later on, after the menstruation cycle is finished, she has to make that prayer up and also the asr prayer because they're from the prayers which can be joined. And this is the uh, famous opinion in the madhab. The author, he says, And it's not permitted to have intercourse with her in the vagina. And if he does do that, he disobeys and he does that, then he has to pay a kafara, he has to pay an expiation of a dinar, or uh, half a dinar, kafara. The Prophet ﷺ said in Sahih Muslim, Isna'u kulla shay illa nikah. Do whatever you want with your wives except for the full intercourse. Okay? Illa nikah. Do whatever you want with your wives except for the full intercourse. And in the hadith narrated by the Khamsa, by the five, the Prophet ﷺ, when speaking about the person that actually did this with his wife while she was menstruating, so he said, فَلْيَتَصَدَّقْ بِدِنَارْ أَوْ نِصْفْ الدِّنَارْ Then he should pay an expiation of a dinar or half a dinar. And Shaykh Ibn Jabir, he said, a dinar is four grams of gold. A dinar is four grams of gold. Type. Some of the ulama, they said this dinar that the person is paying, you have the full dinar and the half dinar, right? Some of the humbly scholars, they said the full dinar is if this intercourse took place when her bleeding was full, when her bleeding was heavy. But if the intercourse took place towards the end of the cycle, when her bleeding became light, then you pay the half dinar at that time. And also the woman, she has to pay also if she was uh, compliant in that act of intercourse. If this jima'a, if this intercourse took place after the haid had stopped, after administration blood had stopped, but before ghusl, then there's no kafara to make. There's no expiation to make. However, tawbah still has to be made because it's still sinful, it's still something you cannot do. You cannot have the relationship with the woman until she has made ghusl. So the tuhr mentioned in the uh, verse in the Quran, okay, فَأْتَلِزُوا لِلْنِسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِيدِ وَلَا تَقْرَبُونَ حَتَّى يَتْحُرْنَا This tuhrna uh, means that she makes ghusl. It's not just that the blood stops, okay? So the relationship can only take place when the ghusl is made. So the Imam, he says, وَجِسْتَمْتِعُوا مِنْهَا بِمَا دُونَهُ and the person, the husband, can have relationships with his wife with everything else except for the private part, the main private part, the vagina. Okay? Because in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, she mentioned, Can the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa nahaid? That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to command our mother Aisha radiallahu anha when she was menstruating to wear a tight wrap around her lower part of the body. And then the Prophet ﷺ would have pleasure with her in any way that he wished. Okay, so the point is that if a man wants to have pleasure with his wife, he's allowed to do so if she's menstruating, but she has to wear a wrap around her private parts, around her hips, that area. If the blood stops and she, doesn't, she hasn't made ghusl, then nothing from the forbidden things is allowed except for fasting and talaq and being divorced. So the nine forbidden things that we mentioned pertaining to the menstruation, from them the only things which are allowed if the blood has stopped but she hasn't made ghusl is that she can be divorced and that she can fast. Tayyib, the other seven are not allowed. And now you have to sit up straight and you have to pay attention. So the author, rahimullah, he says, وَالْمُبْتَدَأَةُ تَجْلِسُوا أَقَلَّهُ The mubtada'a I'll explain all this bit by bit. The Mubtada'a, she sits the least period of Hayd. What is the least period? 
24 hours, right? So she sits the least period of Hajj. The Mubtada is the one who experiences menstruation for the first time. She sits the least period. And then she makes ghusl and she goes ahead and prays and fasts if she has that, okay? In the month of Ramadan, for example. So after the 24 hours, the one who's experienced dam for the first time, blood for the first time, the Mubtada'a, right? After 24 hours, she makes ghusl. And then she goes ahead and continues as though she's not experiencing hayd, even if the blood is continuing after 24 hours. This is the point. And if the blood stops at 15 days or less, because over 15 days, it's another type of blood, right? It's dam istihada or dam al-fasad. So if it stops at 15 days or less, then اقتصلت in the انقطاعه. Then she makes another ghusl. Okay, she makes another ghusl once the blood has actually stopped. فَإِن تَكَرَّرَ ثَلَاثًا فَحَيْدٍ And if this happens three times, meaning three months consecutively, then this is considered to be hayd. وَتَقْدِي مَا وَجَبَ فِيهِ And she makes up that which happened before. Okay, let me break this down bit by bit. So first and foremost, we said the Mubtada'a, she is the one who experiences hayd for the first time. So what she does, the first time she sees blood in her life, right? She, for 24 hours, she considers it to be hayd. 24 hours because that is yaqeenan. For sure, the least amount of time is definitely going to be menstruational blood. That which is coming after 24 hours, we're not sure. Is it going to be dam al hayd or is it going to be dam al fasad, dam al istihada, right? So after the 24 hours, she makes ghusl and she carries on praying and she carries on fasting and she has fast to do. Once she reaches the end of her menstruation, and that has to be lower than 15 days, 15 days or less, right? If it goes beyond 15 days, that's another set of rulings. So it has to be less than 15 days. When that happens, she makes ghusl again. Ihtiyatan. She makes ghusl again, right? And then she does this for three consecutive months. So she does the same thing that I just mentioned now, in each month, three months. And the fourth month, she looks to her pattern. And she sees to herself, how many, how many days did I bleed each month? So say for example, she bled seven days each month. Month one, seven days. Month two, seven days. Month three, seven days. Then the seven days become what is known as Aada, her habit. Her fixed habit and what the rulings are going to be based upon become the seven days. Khalas? Tayyib. Now, going back to the example I gave, or the ruling, I said after 24 hours, she makes the first ghusl, right? And then she fasts and she makes uh, prayer until her blood stops. And then she makes ghusl again, right? So this period is known as dam and mashkuk. The dam, the blood with its doubt. She's not sure is it going to be her period or is it going to be another type of blood until it happens three days. Because the Hanbali scholars, they have the rule that until it reoccurs three times, right, three consecutive months, we don't give her the ruling as having a fixed habit. Okay? So after the three months, we found out that every month she's going to have hayd for seven days. Now after the 24 hours, up until the seven days, we told her you have to fast, right? And you have to pray. So then we found out that actually after 24 hours for, seven, for another six days, she actually had menstruation blood. So then she has to make up what? For the previous three months, she has to make up the fasting and not the salah. She doesn't have to make up the salah because the salah was not actually obligatory upon her. Because the menstruating woman doesn't have salah which is obligatory upon her. Okay? Unless she prayed a salah which was a qada of an obligatory salah. If in that time she prayed a salah of that which was a qada of an obligatory salah, then she has to make this up. Tayyib? Shall I repeat this, uh, the fundamental part of that? Okay. Okay. After 24 hours, she makes ghusl, right? And then she continues praying and fasting until her blood stops. When her blood stops, she makes ghusl again. She does this for three consecutive months. In the fourth month, she now acts upon her habit. Her habit is defined now as the seven days, if she had seven days. طيب, if there's a scenario where in the first month was seven, in the second month was three, in the uh, third month was five, what's her habit going to be? Seven, five, three. What do we say now your habit is? Huh? That. Wait, what occurred three times? The three, right? The three is the one that occurred three times. So that's how you look at it. So if it happens in that situation where it's different every month, then you base it upon that which was fixed. That's which, that which occurred thrice. Tayyib. 
uh, the majority of the ulama, including Ibn Taymiyyah and others, they say that this thrice, that we have to see it three times, you don't have to do that, okay? This is only the Hanbali opinion. So the majority and another narration of Imam Ahmad and Ibn Taymiyyah, they said no, from the first month, after the first month, you can act upon it as being your period, okay? However, the Hanbali scholars, they say no, it has to be times three. Tayyib? You see now why they say that fiqh al is something uh, which needs a lot of study. The Imam, rahimullah ta'ala, he says, وَإِنْ عَبَرَ أَكْثَرُهُ فَمُسْتَحَاضَ He said, the Imam, that if it goes over the most of the hayd, the most of, most of menstru menstruation blood, what is the most of menstruation blood? 15 days, ahsant. So if it goes over 15 days, khalas, it's not going to take the ruling now of menstruation. We give it another ruling. It's going to take a ruling now of being istihada. Istihada is that blood which is not menstruation blood. Or they also call it damul fasad or dam al marad a type of sickness blood Taib. so here this mustahada the one who experiences this type of blood which is over 15 days mustahada she's called she breaks down into three categories into three further categories right so we finish with the mubtada'a the one who is a beginner in hayd she saw her blood for the first time now we're looking at the one who's a mustahada mustahada means that she's seeing uh, blood is gone over 15 days, so it's not menstruation blood, it's the other type of blood. So this breaks down to, into a variety of categories. The first of them is that she is mubtada'a, mustahada, mumayiza. That she is the mubtada'a, the beginner, and she is mustahada, meaning the blood went over 15 days, and she is mumayiza. Mumayiza is that she has tamiz. Tamiz, that she can differentiate between the different types of blood. So she looks at her blood every day, and she can see that this is dark, and it's thick and it's smelly, so this is hayd blood. Or she looks at the blood and she sees that it's red, it's not thick and it's not smelly, so it's the other type of blood, it's istihada. She has what is known as tamiz, okay? So she's able to differentiate between the two types of blood. So this is the one we are looking at now. She's still a mubtada'a, she's still, it's the first time that she's seen blood in her life, but the problem is for her now that it's gone over 15 days, okay? So she sees the blood, it's gone over 15 days, and she's able to distinguish. So the Imam says, فَإِنْ كَانَ بَعْدُ دَمِهَا أَحْمَرُ وَبَعْدُهُ أَسْوَدُ If she sees her blood, some of it is red in the days, and some of it is black. وَلَمْ يَعْبُرْ أَكْثَرُهُ And this blood, that which is hayd blood, distinguishes hayd blood, doesn't go over the أَكْثَرُهُ doesn't go over the most of it. وَلَمْ يَنْقُسْ عَنْ أَقَلِّهِ And doesn't decrease from the least of it. فَهُوَ حَيْدُهَا Then this is considered as being her menstruation. So this woman who's found that in her first month, her blood has just kept going on, right? Over 15 days. But she was able to distinguish. She looked at her blood and she saw that in the first seven days, my blood was a dark blood. So it's the blood of Hayd, right? But after seven days, continually for the next 15 days, it was red blood. So this red blood, she considers as non-menstruation blood. That's what the Imam is saying, okay? So in the second month, she sits according to the differentiation that she is able to make, okay, with the blood. Wal-Ahmar istahada, and the Ahmar blood, the red blood, is known as Dam al-Istihada, okay? Dam al-Istihada. Taib? So this woman, she doesn't have to wait for three consecutive months. After the first month, she's able to know that, look, I've got a problem here, my blood is going over for more than 15 days, so for sure, this cannot be hayd, there's something going on here. So then if she has tamiz, she's able to distinguish, she looks at the amount of days that the blood was dark, and that's what she acts upon in the next month. She acts upon tamiz. Whenever she sees her blood every day, she just observes it, and as long as it's dark blood with the other characteristics, if they're there, then that's menstruation for her. And once those characteristics change to normal blood, then she considers herself now as mustahada. Mustahada is somebody who's not menstruating. She carries on praying, and she carries on fasting, but she has some other rulings pertaining to her. Tayyib. Then there's another category of this istihada, this istihada blood, which goes over 15 days. We have now a mustahada mubtada'a ghayr mumayiza. This person is mustahada, the blood goes over 15 days. She's a beginner, mubtada'a, first time she's seen blood in her life. Ghayr mumayiza, she's unable to distinguish the blood. The blood is coming to her all at one color all in one color, right? So she's unable to make a decision based upon distinguishing factors. The author says, if her blood is not distinguishable, then she sits 
that which is the most common of menstruation in every month. What is the most common of menstruation? Huh? Six or seven days, yes. Six or seven days, right? So this is what she sits because she cannot make a uh, distinguish based upon the properties of the blood, right? She has no tamiz. So she is told that you will sit for six or seven days in the month. Tayyip. So she has no adha, she has no fixed period, and her blood is going over 15 days, and she's unable to distinguish which is the menstruation blood and which is not. So she's told, sit for six or seven days, okay? And each of these points are mentioned based upon a hadith and evidences, but there's no point confusing ourselves with those. We'll stick to just the understanding. Tayyip. But this woman, in this situation, she has to do this, she has to wait for three months, okay? She has to have a cycle of three months, uh, before she acts upon the six or seven days before she acts upon the six or seven days so she's like the mubtada al, uh, she's like the mubtada who experiences menstruation for the first time right she's like her she has to after 24 hours she has to uh, uh, make ghusl okay she has to make ghusl this is what they say طيب, the Imam says, well, mustahada al -mu'tada. So now you have a different type of mustahada. We finish with the mubtada'a. The mustahada al mubtada'a. The mustahada, the one who is experiencing blood for more than 15 days, for the first time in her life she saw blood. Now we're looking at somebody who's a mu'tada. She has a ada. She's a woman who has menstruation cycle fixed, right? She's experienced with menstruation. But now she's becoming mustahada. Now she's experiencing that her blood is going beyond 15 days. So she could be habitually having blood for a period of five days, right? That's a habitual understanding of the blood. But now <clears throat> her blood is continuing before her fixed days, okay? And it's going on and on and it's not stopping until after the 15 days. So what does she do here? She sits for what she used to know was her ada. Okay, she sits for what she used to know was her ada. She used to know that her ada, my ada, was always seven days. So this extra blood, I'm not even going to look at it. From day eight, from day nine, I'm not going to look at it. I was always fixed on seven days. Anything beyond seven days, I'm not going to look at it. This is her ruling, right? Even if she has tamiz, the author he said, even if she's able to distinguish the two types of blood, even if she can look at yes, this is haid blood and this is not haid blood, even if she's able to do that, she doesn't go to that. She just goes back to the fact that she had previously a fixed period, a fixed ada. Okay? So a woman, she had previously a fixed ada. How do you have a fixed ada? How many months does it have to be consecutively? Three months, right? So she's one of those who had this. Okay? So if she falls into this scenario, then she bases it upon an ada. Another scenario from this that some of the ulama they give, they say it could be, it could be that this woman who's now experiencing this istihada blood, damu istihada, which is over 15 days, in the first seven days where she normally has her period, in the first seven days where she normally has menstruation blood, she's now having dam istihada. She's having dam istihada, okay? And in the second seven days, okay, or more, she has her menstruation blood. So she's able to distinguish, she has tamiz. They said even if she has tamiz, she doesn't look at that. She looks back to what her ada was. Her ada was that in the first seven days, I used to have menstruation, that's what I base it upon. This is the opinion of the madhab. Tayyip? Wa in nasiyatha, the imami says, if she forgets her ada, this woman who has habitual hayd, right? Fixed hayd. If she forgets her ada, amilat bi tamiz asale. If this woman, she forgot, She's in a situation, she has a fixed ada, but she forgets when her ada is. How many days it might have been? Was it in the beginning of the month or later on in the month? And how many days? Right? But she's able to make tamiz. Tamiz, she's able to distinguish between the blood. Then she acts upon the fact that she can distinguish between the blood. But they say that this tamiz, this distinguishing, has to be tamiz as salih. Tamiz as salih, that it has to be a valid tamiz. What do you think of valid tamiz is? A valid distinguishing based upon what we've taken, some of the rules. Okay, so these are the things that are enable you to distinguish. So I'm saying she's able to distinguish, but what makes it the fact that it's a valid, I don't know what the word is, a valid distinguishing. <laughs> it's, 
It's to do with time, exactly. Exactly, it has to be over 24 hours. So if she distinguishes the Hayd blood, but it's less than 24 hours, this is not Tamil Saleh. This is not a distinguishing that we will look at in terms of ruling. And also, if it's over 15 days, then again, it's not a Tamil Saleh. It's not a distinguishing that we can look at because it's over 15 days, right? So this one, she forgets her Ada. She forgets her period in terms of when it was fixed, in terms of amount or in terms of uh, where it was, right? So what she acts upon, she acts upon Tamiz. She acts upon the fact that she can distinguish her blood. So whenever she sees the Hayd blood, that's where she sits. And if she doesn't see the Hayd blood, she considers it to be uh, Dam al-Istihada. Tayyib. If this was a class that I was teaching in uh, school, I'd make everyone stand up 10 times, jump up 10 times, because we need to keep active, right? Because this is very difficult. So try your best, inshallah. I'll give us tawfiq, inshallah. So the Imam, the author, he says, فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ تَمِيزٌ فَغَالِبُ الْحَيْقِ If this woman who forgot her ada, she had the ada fixed, hayd, but she forgot it. And now she can't do tamiz for whatever reason. She can't distinguish between the blood. What does she do? فَغَالِبُ الْحَيْدِ Then she sits the ghalib, the most common of the hayd. What was the most common of the hayd? Six or seven days, right? So she sits any six or seven days. Like, he gives an example, كَالْعَالِمَا بِمَوْدِعِهِ أَنَّاسِهَا لِعَدَدِهِ Like the one who knows that in the beginning of the month, I used to have menstruation, but I've forgotten how many days. This woman is known as a mutahayyara. Mutahayyara means the one who's bewildered. She's totally confused. And also, they give this name because it totally confuses the ulama. Right? Her situation in the variety that they come with totally freaks out the ulama in this uh, situation. So she's called mutahayyara. So what's her situation? She doesn't have tamiz, she cannot distinguish, but she remembers that she had uh, So this woman, she doesn't have tamiz, so she goes to six or seven days, right? And an example of that is the woman that she knows the place of the month where she would generally have menstruation. It was in the early part of the month, the middle part of the month, or the last part of the month. But she forgot how many days. So this person, a ghalib al she sits to six or seven days. She sits... Uh, considering herself menstruating for six or seven days طيب, when she is the mutahayyira or it could be a situation in alimat adadahu or she knows how many days she's supposed to experience she knows, she remembers that it's supposed to be seven days وَنَسِيَتْ مَوْدِعَهُ مِنَ الشَّهَرِ but she forgot where it's supposed to be in the month is it in the beginning of the month, the middle of the month or the end of the month she knows I'm seven days but she can't remember is it the beginning, middle or end right? for whatever reason even if she knew that it was in the middle of the month, the ruling is that she sits at the beginning of the month because she forgot. She forgot where she was supposed to sit in the month. She knows it's seven days, but she's not sure beginning, middle or end of the month, right? But even if she has an inclination that it's towards the end of the month somewhere from the second half of the month, the ruling is we say to her, then she sits from the beginning of the month. She takes it as six or seven days from the beginning of the month. No, she's bleeding. She's bleeding. Taib. Now, the Imam is going to go back to the Haid al Mu'tada, the one who is menstruating and she's Mu'tada. Right? She's, she's, she's not doing Mustahada now. It's not that blood which is over 15 days, it's menstruating blood. Okay? And she's Mu'tada. She has a fixed period. So he's speaking about this person again and he says, one man zadat ada to her. If somebody has a fixed period and it increases, it goes from seven days to eight days. What do we do? He's going to mention. Oh taqaddamat or her period comes before it should have. Right? It was in the middle of the month and now it became before the middle of the month. What do we do? Oh ta'akharat or it got delayed. Instead of being in the middle of in the beginning of the month, it started in the middle of the month. فَمَا تَكَرَّرَ ثَلَاثٌ حَيْدٌ So he says here that any changes in her pattern are not to be considered in terms of ruling until they happen three times, three consecutive months. So if this pattern, this new pattern that's come to her, so this woman, seven days she has every month, right? In the beginning of the month. But now it's increased to eight. The eight, you don't bother with it. You stick to seven. But if it happened every month for three months, seven, seven, it went to eight, 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 then in the fourth month, your, your rulings have changed now from seven days to eight days. And the same thing applies to the place in the month. 
if it used to happen in the beginning, but it got forward a bit or got backward a bit, delayed a bit, okay, then nothing is ruled upon until it happens for three months. So the ruling will take place in the fourth month, fourth month, okay. And an easier opinion of Imam Ahmad, a second opinion, an opinion of Ibn Taymiyyah and others, they say no, as soon as this change takes place, then the change is acted upon, okay. This is another opinion in the madhab. So the author, Rahimullah, the author, may Allah have mercy upon him, he says, وَمَا نَقَسَ عَنْ عَادَةِ طُهْرٌ And that which decreases from her fixed period, meaning the number of days. So she has seven days as a fixed period, but now it's gone down to six. So the seventh day, it's not a problem. You consider it as pure. There's no issue here. She normally has seven days, but it's gone to six, not a problem. The seventh day, she's pure, she's pure. There's no blood there, right? Very simple. وَمَا, وما عَادَ فِيهَا جَلَسَتْهُ However, if she has a fixed period of seven days and she stopped now on the sixth day, she became pure habitually for, whatever, for, a, week, for a month or two months. But then it started to come back on the seventh day. So we're remaining within her fixed period, which she was used to, which was seven days. So though the seventh day has come back, we have to still give the ruling of menstruation because it used to be part of her previous fixed period. So this is what the Imam means here. So first he said that which decreases from her fixed period, it's not a problem. We see it as purity. But if it comes back, that day comes back to being menstruation, then we have to give it again, the ruling of being menstruation because it's part of her menstruation cycle that was previously fixed. And then he says, وَالصُفْرَة وَالْكُدْرَة فِي زَمْنِ الْعَادَةَ حَيْدٌ And this thing known as Sufra and Kudra, if it comes in her fixed time of Hayd, her fixed period, then it's considered as part of Hayd. So Sufra is a yellowish type of liquid that comes from the woman, right? It's a yellowish type of liquid. And Kudra is a reddish type of liquid. They, they, mention, they describe it as being somewhat dirty looking, right? That's how they say it. So the first one is the red, uh, yellowish type of liquid that comes generally from wounds, etc. The type that you see coming out of wounds. Sufra. The Kudra is that which comes from, uh, is that which is uh, tainted with red. And they say it's slightly dirty looking. They said these liquids, if they come in the time of her fixed menstruation, so let's say for example her menstruation blood is stopped. And now she sees Sufra and Kudra, these two types of liquid. Within her normal menstruation period, it's going to be given the same ruling as menstruation. If it came outside of her menstruation period, it's just ignored. It's not looked at. Okay? But because it's within her menstruation period, it's given the ruling of menstruation. The Imam says, وَمَنْ رَأَتْ يَوْمًا دَمًّا وَيَوْمًا نِقَاءً فَالدَّمُّ حَيْدْ وَنِقَاءَ طُهْرٌ وَمَنْ مَا لَمْ يَعْبُرْ أَكْثَرَهُ Whoever sees from these women, a day of menstruation and a day of purity, then the, the day is just as an example, it could be more, okay? So whoever sees a, a day of uh, blood and then a day of purity, then whenever she sees blood, it's going to be given the ruling of menstruation and whenever she sees purity, it's going to be given the ruling of purity, okay? So this woman, if she has in her normal seven day period, she has one day, she starts, the blood is there, Okay, for uh, the blood is there, then, and it's more than a day and a night, then she's going to rule that as that was menstruation for me. She, she has a normal fixed period. But for example, on the third day, she sees purity. Not a problem. That day will be ruled as purity. On the fourth day, it comes back, right, as blood. Not a problem. It gets the ruling of menstruation. Fifth day, pure. Not a problem. Pure. Okay, so this can take place back and forth, it's not a problem. Whenever the blood is seen, it's given the ruling of menstruation. Whenever purity is seen, it's given the ruling of purity. And this mas'ala is known as al-talfiq. The scholars, they call it al-talfiq. This, this issue is known as talfiq according to the scholars. And here also, when the blood is on and off like a day on, 24 hours on, then, 20, then uh, uh, 24 hours off, when you combine it all together, the amount of days which she was on, it shouldn't go over 15 days. If it went over 15 days, this is another set of problems. This is Dhamma al-Istihada again, okay? It goes back to Dhamma al-Istihada. One point to mention here, Ibn Qudama rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that this purity that she sees, it shouldn't be less than 24 hours, okay? Our author, it's as though he was saying, even if the purity is less than 24 hours, it's fine. We accept that as being a day of purity. But Ibn Khudama, 
and others they say no it has to be over 24 hours of purity and this is generally the easier fatwa for the woman to act upon because if you say to her, every time you see an hour of purity or two hours of purity you have to make ghusl and then the blood comes back and then again she's hired it's very problematic for her so they're saying until you see purity for Ibn Qudama says until you see purity for 24 hours then it's not considered as being pure Tayyip. How does a woman, as a quick side point, how does she know that she's pure? The woman, to know that she's now in a pure state, that her menstruation has stopped, either one thing will happen, which is that she will see something called al qassatu al bayda al qassatu bayda al qassatu al bayda It's a sa'il al abyad It's a whitish liquid that women, they know, right? That this tends to come at the end of menstruation. This is one of the clear signs. If this doesn't take place, then she has to insert cotton or something of that nature and it should come out with nothing. That's why Aisha radiallahu anha, she used to tell the women that send to me these cotton uh, samples so that I can tell you, has your haid actually finished or not? Don't rush to judge upon yourself that it's finished. There should be a clear, complete finish, either with the qasatul bayda, that white liquid, or the way I just mentioned. وَالْمُسْتَحَادَةُ وَنَحْوُهَا تَغْسِلُ فَرْجَهَا وَتَعْصِبُهُ and the mustahada, the one who has blood continue, and that person like it, meaning the person like it, is someone that has continued hadith. So somebody has continued urine drops, for example. Okay? Then this person takes the same ruling here. That what they do for the mustahada, the one who is bleeding continuously for more than 15 days, then what she does, تَغْسِلُ فَرْجَهَا Then she washes her private part, or he washes his private part, وَتَعْصِبُهُ وَتَعْصِبُهُ here means for the women that in the old times they used to do something, a very tight wrap, okay, which would prevent the blood from coming out. It would be a, very, it would be a way of blocking the uh, blood from leaving the vagina, okay. So they would do this. He says, this is what you have to do, and then you have to make wudu for every salah, okay. So the person has to try basically to prevent the uh, impurity from spreading. That's what it's meant here, okay. After washing it off, they do something like wearing a wrap or something of that nature. They try to prevent it from spreading and they make wudu for every prayer. وَتُصَلِّي فُرُودًا وَنَوَافِلًا And then they can pray uh, the fard prayer of that time as well as the nawafil, as well as the optional prayers. Some of the ulama, they said, no, you can only pray the fard. But anyway, here the author, he says, you can pray the fard and the nawafil. Okay? So this, can, uh, this applies to one who has istihada, continual blood, and the one who has, uh, uh, what's it known as? Salas al-bawl. Salas al-bawl is the continual urine drops, right? So somebody of this nature, this is what they should do. They should wrap up and they should uh, make wudu for every prayer. And the mustahada, the one who is suffering this continual blood, her husband cannot have intercourse with her unless he fears anat. Anat is that he's extremely unable to control himself. He's going to fall into zina or it's going to cause him psychological problems, right? If this is the case, that it's being overwhelmed with desire, then in this situation, he can go ahead uh, and he can have uh, intercourse. The majority, however, outside of the madhab, they allow it. They said even the one who uh, has dhamma istihada, you can have intercourse with her at any given time, any situation. The Imam, he says, And this one who is mustahada, suffering uh, the blood continually, right, for more than 15 days, then it's recommended for her to make a ghusl for every salah. Why? Because Aisha radiallahu anha in Bukhari, she narrates the hadith of Umm Habiba radiallahu anha, where she said, uh, Umm Habiba, ustahidat sab'a sinin. That she had istihada for seven years continually. This Umm Habiba, seven continual years. فَسَأَلَتْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم عن ذلك. And then she asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم about that. فَأَمَرَهَا صلى الله عليه وسلم أن تغتصل لكل صلاة أن تغتصل. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم commanded her to make غسل. وقال هذا عرق. And he said that this is a, an issue to do with the vein. Okay, this is a problem with the vein. This is why this bleeding is continual. فَكَانَتْ تَغْتَصِلُ لِكُلِّ صَلَاةٍ So she used to make ghusl for every salah. So this is something which is highly recommended for the one who has continual blood, right? It's only recommended that she makes ghusl for every salah. However, in another narration uh, by Ahmed, Abi Dawood, Tirmidhi and others, there's the narration of Hamna bin Jahsh, Hamna bin Jahsh radiallahu anha, where the Prophet sallallahu guided her that if you make a ghusl 
right, for this istihada, this blood which is continual, then he guided her to joining the salawat. That the woman who is mustahada, she should join the salawat because she's considered as being in a situation of sickness, right? So she should join that which can be joined. She makes one ghusl for dhuhr and asr, then another ghusl for maghrib and isha, and one ghusl for isha, uh, one ghusl for fajr. And the imam says, وَأَكْثُرُ مُدَّةِ النِّفَاسِ أَرْبَعُونَ يَوْمًا And the most for, he's moved on to something else now, we'll finish with this in a few sentences. He said that most for postnatal bleeding, the bleeding that woman suffers generally after having delivered the baby, the most for postnatal bleeding is 40 days. Because in Ahmed, Abi Dawood and Tirmidhi, it's narrated that Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, كانت النفساء تجلس في على أحد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أربعين يوم. That the people who used to suffer this postnatal bleeding, they used to sit for a period of 40 days in the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. So therefore it's given the consideration that it's normal time is 40 days, okay? 40, time, 40 days of nifas is the normal. وما تطهرت قبله تطهرت وصلت. But this person who is having postnatal bleeding, nifas, whenever she, whenever she sees that the blood, blood has stopped, then she purifies herself and she goes ahead and she prays. Okay? Brothers, keep concentrating. And the woman whose blood stops, uh, sorry, not whose blood stops, and it's um, disliked, to have intercourse with the woman who is having the first uh, before she has purified herself, before the 40 days, okay? And another narration in the madhab is that it can be even before the 40 days. So this last point, we mentioned intercourse, right? The, per the person cannot have intercourse with his wife if she has postnatal bleeding. It's something which is disliked. It's makru. However, another narration from Imam Muhammad and others, they said, it's okay. And also we mentioned in this sentence, before I got confused by the action taking place, that uh, if the blood stops and the woman becomes pure before the 40 days, then that's fine. She goes ahead, makes ghusl, and uh, there's no problem there. She starts praying, etc. Okay? However, he says, If the blood comes back to her, the nifas blood, right? If it comes back to her, فَمَشْكُوكٌ فِيهِ For this dam now is considered as dam, which is doubtful. We're not sure is it dam nifas or is it dam istihada. So this woman, she's having postnatal bleeding. It stopped after 10 days. Then there was five days of purity. Then after the five days of purity, still within the 40, it came back, blood came back to her. So this blood now which is with her, we're going to give it a ruling of being dam mashkuk. Dam, blood which is doubtful. We're not sure is it dam nifas or dam istihada. So this woman, what she has to do now in this situation, tasum wa tusalli wa taqti al wajib. She has to go ahead and pray, and if she has fasts upon her, she has to fast. But once the 40 days are over, then anything from ibadah which was done in this period of doubtfulness, which is the blood which returned, this period of doubtfulness, then she has to also repeat that after 40 days, right? Because it's not known was it nifas or something else. Tayyip? However, Ibn Qadam ta'ala in Al-Mughni, he said that even when it comes back, we'll consider it, we'll, we will consider it as being dam and nifas. So it's easy for her. She just has to leave off the prayer and leave off the fast. But she has to then afterwards make up only the fasts. Because like Hayd, the woman doesn't have to make up the uh, salah. She only has to make up the fasting. And the Imam says, وَهُوَ الْكَلْحَيْدِ فِي مَا يَحِلُّ وَيَحْرُمُ وَيَجِبُ وَيَسْخُطُ and nifas is exactly like hayd, like menstruation blood in its rulings. In terms of that which is obligatory, in terms of that which is not obligatory, and in terms of that which should be avoided. Okay? This is what he means. Except for غير al-idda wal -bulug. Except for you cannot use nifas blood as counting for the idda. Before we said that the idda, a woman who is uh, mature, she experiences hayd, she has to use three cycles of Hayd as her Idda. Okay? So this blood here cannot be used as one of those cycles. The Nifas blood cannot be used as one of those cycles. So that's one of the differences between the, uh, Nifas and Hayd blood in terms of the rulings. Another difference is that it is not used to show Balugh. Okay? It's not used for showing Balugh. The Imam, the last sentence he says, وَإِنْ وَلَدَتْ تَوْأَمَيْنِ If the person has two, if the person has two twins, if the person has twins, 
If the woman has twins, then the nifas, فَأَوَّلُوا nifas وَآخِرُهُ مِنْ أَوَّلِهِمَا Then the nifas duration is considered from the first of them. Okay? Nothing to do with the second one. So for example, a woman from the same pregnancy, she has delivers one child, and then five days later, she delivers another child. So she doesn't have to wait 45 days. No, it's still 45, 40 days. So the first child, 40 days. The second child will be 35 days. So basically, the ruling of the first is on the first child, if she has twins. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa jazakumullah khair. Anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any shortcomings and mistakes were from myself and shaitan. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us fiqh of this deen and application of this deen. Ameen. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this short effort that we made in this course of tahara heavy on our scale of good deeds on the day of judgment because that is the reality of what matters at the end of the day. And inshallah you benefited and alhamdulillah the classes are recorded if you ever want to go back and review.